Hey, this is Emily. This is Mark. And we're Nightclub, and you're watching Eclectic Arts. So here we are on the uh, streets of Seattle <laughs> after, after, a hot, after a hot ass show in the fun house where nightclub just headlined and just tore the house down. So how are you guys doing with the tour so far with Comic Price? Great. Those guys are awesome. We toured with them last fall with Lords of Acid and Comic Price and became friends on that tour and they asked us to come on tour with them again. So here we are doing it again. And You guys have so much energy live, and you can tell that when you were saying that when you first played the Fun House, there was like three people there, oh, yeah. and then now you're playing, and there's you know, a bunch of people there, and um, your stuff's just your music's just infectious. Thank you. And yeah, Thank so you very much. Thank and it all goes back to like say 2012 when you guys started as a duo. So yes. for those that aren't familiar with you, can you kind of talk a little bit about your history and what got you to this point in 2018? Um, we we met. We were hanging out. Um, we both realized that we kind of liked the same music. We weren't. There was no intention to have a band. We just sort of dug music a lot. And I'd been in bands. Emily was writing music on her own. And then we just sort of started talking about since we just had such similar music tastes. Hey, why don't we try a track or something? Let's try and write something for someone. Like it wasn't an intention to start a band. It was just sort of to write music and see where it goes. And then we just started liking the music a lot and Emily originally just had never been a singer or in a band and she just started demoing our songs and we just liked the sound of it because it sounded unique to us different so we just decided that we should uh, maybe pursue it as a band and it kind of just evolved into a band. Yeah I mean I, I had no aspirations really of being a lead singer like I was not confident at all <laughs> like I thought it was terrible like, I was like eh. but then you know you kind of coached me into yeah, for sure. Uh, I always thought it was great. Yeah. Okay, so how do you feel now when you're on stage singing? I mean, I still get super nervous and anxious, and I'm still like, God, am I going to suck tonight? But I think I've gotten better about it. I think I've grown into it a little more, I think. But I still get super nervous before. Sort of happens. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Yeah. She's bent over backwards, about to puke, completely nervous, Literally. doesn't want to go on stage, yeah. hates every minute of it. Then gets on a stage and turn transforms into this other person, and then immediately after we play, like, were we any good? Was that any good? <laughs> <laughs> it's just this, okay, she just no met a, it's a metamorphosis. <laughs> this whole dichotomy going on. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Okay. Um, so Emily, with the songs that you guys write, I know you have a new album coming out in August. Yeah. Um, do you write the melodies and the lyrics, or do you kind of have we more? We both do. Okay. Um, we both write everything 50-50, like it's very equal. Um, like we'll sit down and usually start with like a bass line or piano melody or something and then we'll kind of build from there and usually lyrics are the last thing you know but I, I mean I would say I would say we put yeah it's pretty 50-50 yeah I mean we basically just write instrumentals and then the instrumental we write tons of them 50, 60, 70 I don't even know like yeah. just tons of instrumental songs and then whatever seems the most melodically inspiring and we think are the best instrumentals then they have to then go to, through the stage of she'll be inspired by a lyric I'll be inspired by a, by a lyric but even the instrumentals have a complete the melodic structure of the song is already there it's, it's just what are the lyrics good how do they fit into those melodies sometimes we come up with a lyric like you know in the room while we're writing it but usually it's like we'll have an instrumental and we'll drive around in our car for like three months and try to figure it out like it, it takes a long time to come up with the lyrics usually. That's usually the last thing, but very rarely you know, get inspired from writing it. Okay. Yeah. So, so for the album that's coming out in August, yeah. are those songs that have been percolating for a long time, or some of the old, some new mix? Uh, they're all pretty new. When within, within a year. Yeah. Like Candy 
Can Code of Suicide, which is the single that's out now. We had an instrumental for it. I think we had that instrumental even before the copy Lords videos like that's yes. another thing that I like we sit there and we come up with these videos and I, I direct them and make them and we just kind of make everything ourselves so it's like we need the time to go make some videos because they take us a really long time to make right so it sounds like you guys are a real DIY kind of band then Every, sure. absolutely everything we don't even have outside producers no one mixed our record no one mastered our record no one made the artwork no one makes the, no videos. One makes the videos we it literally is the two of us there's nobody else Wow. Involved. That's, that's a shit ton of work. It's a shit it's, ton it's a of lot work. work. But it's yes. also that you have complete control over it, too, then, yeah. of what you are putting out to everybody. Yeah, yeah it's, we it's not even because we're control freaks. I think it's just a budgetary mm. necessity if you want to make money. You're kind of a control freak. I mean, a little bit. Yes. I mean, we, we want to make good stuff. But I wouldn't be against somebody doing something if they were really good. It should yeah. be good. Okay, and I guess the last thing would be, since you already touched on it, about the music videos. Um, where do you get inspiration for your ideas for what's in those videos? Because I was watching all of them, and it's like, they're so different. Yeah. Um, you can tell, like, each one's kind of like a capsule. Mm -hmm. Boy, I'm not even sure, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> Candy Coded Suicide was... When we wrote that, we were like, this is a very visual song. Like, we kind of already had an idea of what we wanted. But then we kind of flesh it out. But we, you know, we wanted we had the color palette in mind, like kind of knew what it was gonna be, kind of like a fucked up Katy Perry video or something. Yeah, yeah like a really messed up version of that. Yeah. Something very candy and pop, but the song is pretty dark. 